Hi, I'm Stefan Papadakis with Papadakis Racing. We're here at our race shop in Carson, California, where we just finished up our 3D printed Inconel header for our GR Super engine. This is actually not the first metal 3D printed part that we've had made. We also did an aluminum intake manifold for the GR Supra, and I'll link to that video in the description down below. And this project wouldn't be possible without SolidWorks. They have a new product, SolidWorks Connected, which is what we used for the design of not only the 3D printed part, but the fabricated part as well. Let's get started. I'll show you guys the entire process. So this was a fun project. We got to use a lot of technology to make this 3D printed header. The first special tool we used was this thing called a ferro arm. And our buddy Tyler came over. He's the one that ran the arm, which is a 3D scanning tool. So once he had it all set up, he started scanning the engine and the engine bay. And the way the tool works is it sends out a laser. And this laser, through the software, creates what is called a point cloud. And this point cloud is essentially a bunch of little points in space that eventually are so dense that it makes this virtual component that you're scanning. So for us, it was the engine, the frame rail, engine mount, under the hood, and all these different parts that we want to make sure that we can fit our new turbo system within and we can design it virtually. In order for the scanning system to work properly, it doesn't really like shiny stuff. So Tyler sprays the special chemical on all the parts that he's gonna scan in order to bring the shine down a little bit and make it more of a matte finish. And the way you use the tool is you keep going back and forth and it continues to scan all of the areas that the laser hits and you can see it starting to essentially paint a picture inside the software. And he'll keep going until he's into all the different crevices and gets a very accurate model of the entire engine bay. And it's all set up into these different components. So we can have the engine, the headlight, the hood, and turn these things on and off as needed. Once all that was set up, we uploaded it to our buddy Matt from Full Race. And he's the one that's actually designing the header. So we had a couple of Zoom calls and we used our SolidWorks connected software. The SolidWorks Connected software gives you all the normal 3D design tools, plus a cloud-based management and project planning and communication tools, all powered by the software's connection to the 3D Experience platform. So you and your team are now able to efficiently design and collaborate from anywhere in the world, just like Matt and I did, even with Matt being based in Canada. With the software, we're actually working off the same file on the cloud. So we create these things called parts, which are the individual components. So the header, the wastegates, the turbocharger, and you assemble them all in, in assembly. And within that assembly, you can make connections and mates. So you mount the turbocharger onto the header, you put the header onto the engine, you can close the hood, so you can get in there and make sure the clearance and the fitment is exactly what you want. Matt even spent some additional time making the header look super realistic and rendered it with colors and textures and everything, which is this image that you see here. It almost looks real, but it's all in the SolidWorks software. So as Matt was designing the header, Tyler and I worked on the cylinder head flange. And the way this flange bolts up is very different than what I've seen in the past. Instead of it having bolts that go through the flange and into the cylinder head, it actually uses this bar in the bottom. And it's a 30 degree wedge on the header that slides into that bar on the bottom. And on the top, it has this rail with several bolts on it. And as you tighten down that those top nuts and that top bar, it wedges everything towards the gasket and onto the cylinder head. It's actually a pretty cool setup because it's easy to get to just those top bolts, but it took us a little bit of playing around before we got a design that we were happy with. And we just printed sample flange pieces out of plastic until we were happy with the design that we came up with. Once Matt was ready with a version of the header that we were happy with, we printed that out of plastic and we started mocking it up on the cylinder head we had at the shop. And it fit together kind of like a puzzle. We had the flange sections, which were paired up in cylinders one, two, three, four, and then five, six. And we connected them with a couple of runner sections and then the collector. And the way we connected them were these small little dowel pins and some receiving holes. And once we had everything all mocked up, we can make sure that the clearance was sufficient from the turbine housing, which gets really hot, to the valve cover, which about an inch or so is plenty. It seems pretty close, but it works just fine with that amount of air gap. Once we locked in the header design, and we went over to Mimo Technic, which is the place that does the metal 3D printing, to get started on the print. And the print is done in this very sophisticated machine that just prints stuff out of metal. It can do a lot of different metals like titanium, stainless steel, aluminum. 
and in our case, Inconel 625. And the Inconel is a high nickel alloy. It's actually not a stainless steel. At high temperatures, which is where these headers are run, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, the Inconel 625 is about four times as strong as stainless steel. So you can make the part thinner, lighter, and it still be more reliable than the stainless steel part. And the way the printer works is it has this chamber. When it's gonna print, it evacuates all of the normal air out of the chamber and fills it up with an argon inert gas. It uses a special powder. The powder comes in from the top of the machine and lays down on this plate. The laser then welds the powder to that plate and then lays down another really thin, about four thousandths of an inch, about the thickness of a human hair, layer of this powder. The laser then comes back again welds that new layer of powder to the previous layer. Over the period of about 24 hours, it makes this one print where it's just layer after layer on top of each other in all these different cross sections. And the plate continues to move down until you end up with an entire welded part within all of the rest of the powder that it didn't weld. And your whole part is hiding within the bowels of this machine. Once the print is ready to be pulled out, they start raising the plate back up and you can see where the powder starts falling away. This is all the powder that wasn't welded together. But then our print starts appearing in all of the area where the weld from the laser printed the part together. Jonathan will start brushing all of the extra powder into like the little powder drain. And that powder drain just falls down into another container where they catch all the powder that wasn't used. And they can actually clean it and use that on the next print. You're just using the powder and the material that you need only for the part. And there really isn't much waste. The rest of the powder can be used in a later print. So once our printer was done, you can see how all the tubes and that flange are stuck to the plate. They're actually welded to it and they have to be cut off that plate. And in addition to that, there are some what they call support material. And we have to either hammer them out and knock that stuff out. And for the flange areas, the surface that mounts to the turbocharger and to the cylinder head where we want it really smooth, I actually put it in the mill and machine those nice and smooth. All the areas that are gonna get welded got sanded down and cleaned really well. So you have some really good areas for the weld to fuse together. So we use the cylinder head as our fixture. And Dominic went and mounted all of the cylinder head flanges to the head. And we've got a 3D printed bracket that places the collector in space exactly where we want it. And then we went and started connecting the rest of the parts together to be welded. In order to weld this, we used two different gas regulators. One that sends the argon gas out to the torch that has the normal shielding gas and a separate regulator that sends the argon gas inside the part that we're welding. Because when you weld it, the puddle will actually penetrate to the inside of the tube, and you want to make sure that you have an inert gas inside the tube as well, so you have a really clean weld all the way through the component. The filler rod we're using is the same alloy as the printed part, Inconel 625. And a lot of the areas that we welded were hard to get to, so Dominic used a large gas lens, which allows the tungsten to be stuck out quite a bit, and some of the parts were even so hard to get to, he had to bend the tungsten in order to get everything welded properly. The parts are pretty thin, only 1.4 millimeters, which is about 55 thousandths of an inch. And due to that thin cross section, you can't put too much heat and over melt the Inconel. So he used a pulse setting on the welder to make sure he didn't overheat the metal. When you look inside, you can see how the weld puddle penetrated all the way to the inside. And this creates a really strong weld at all of the joints. And I believe we end up with a really strong header. Really happy with how it turned out. Although this whole process was taking so long and the printer actually had some challenges and delays with printing the part. So we were worried that the header wasn't going to make it to our last event of the year at Irwindale. So Full Race also made us a header out of their traditional manufacturing technique, which is using straight tubing and predefined radius bends and cutting them down until you end up with the header that you're looking for. And when Full Race made the fabricated header, we actually used Matt's SolidWorks skills again and went back into the same model. And instead of having the 3D printed model, he made one with a lot of segments with known Ben radii and actually designed the collector and the whole header virtually again, which is what the Full Race fabricators used as a model in order to make the new part. And we even 3D printed a fixture out of plastic so they can more easily make the collector. And they made this whole header in under a week in order for us to make sure that we made the event. And it's crazy that we did all this stuff with the 3D printed header and we didn't actually end up using it but we will use it in the future. Uh, we were just 
you know, it's, it's this cutting edge technology and we're a little bit concerned doing this and using it at the, the last event of the year. So after adding our EGTs, which are exhaust gas temperature sensors and a fitting, which allows us to monitor the exhaust gas back pressure, which is the pressure between the exhaust valve and the turbine wheel. We had the whole car running again, and then it was time to get the thing started and then off to the dyno and get it all tuned up with our new header turbocharger setup. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. I want to thank SolidWorks again for partnering on this whole project. It's a software that I've been using for over eight years, and it really is an industry standard in the automotive aftermarket. And I get asked all the time, like, you know, how do I get into the automotive aftermarket? How do I, you know, get started engineering things? And one way is really learning the tools of the trade. And one of them is, is you know, CAD software. Uh, every year, SolidWorks has what they call 3D Experience World, and it's an in-person uh, conference where a bunch of designers and engineers get together and learn more about the software and, and designing stuff in CAD. This year, it's totally virtual, and in the description down below, I'll put a VIP link that you can use and attend it for free. And you know, really use that as something to, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm going to use it myself and hopefully, you know, increase knowledge and up the skills using CAD software. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.